Hi, in this video we're going to look at two examples around intercompany sales of inventory. In the first example we will look at a situation where all of that intercompany sale was sold to external parties in the same year and in the next example we'll look at a situation where it was still in any inventory and not sold to an external party in the same year as the intercompany sale. So the first example here is pretty simple and it's really here just to illustrate the basic elimination that you do for any intercompany sale. But we'll also go through this as a reminder for you of inventory cost of goods sold and, and so on. So here we have a parent company purchasing all of its subsidiaries output for a million cash reselling it for 2.5 million dollars all to external buyers and all within this the year of this million dollar sale the original cost to the subsidiary was 700,000 and since it's sold from the subsidiary to the parent we call it an upstream sale now as a reminder these are the books of the parent company these would be their actual journal entries debiting inventory and paying for it, selling the merchandise for 2.5 million, and then moving that out of inventory and into cost of goods sold. On the books of the subsidiary, we sell for a million and we move inventory out to cost of goods sold for $700,000. So at this point, just pause the video for a moment and think, okay, what are sales to the consolidated entity? What is cost of goods sold to the consolidated, to, sorry, to the consolidated entity? And what is the profit to the consolidated entity? And we're gonna look at the eliminations in a minute. So I'd like you to figure out these numbers and then come back to the video. First, sales. To the consolidated entity, there's only one sale. It's the sale outside of the company, 2.5 million. The cost of goods sold is the original cost to the subsidiary of 700,000. Therefore, the consolidated profit is 1.8 million. Now, the elimination for this is fairly simple and the main thing is that you have to remember to do this all the time. When you go to do your consolidated income statement, you're not going to see this on the income statement of the sub or the parent, so you just need to remember to do it. And your income statement is going to be sales are parent plus sub minus a million, and cost of goods sold, parent plus sub minus a million. Now, you'll notice that we have deducted a million from our revenue and deducted a million from our expenses, therefore, in this case, there's no effect on net income, but what we have done is shrunk our income statement back to where it should have been if we had only sold to external parties. If we didn't do this, sales would be the sub, including this million dollar sale, plus the parent having a $2.5 million sale to external parties, in other words, we would be booking 3.5 million in sales if we didn't eliminate this intercompany sale. Now, let's say for a moment that instead of 100% ownership, the parent owns 80% of the subsidiary. How much of that profit, the consolidated profit, is attributable to the NCI shareholders and the parent? Well, recall that the initial sale from the subsidiary to the parent was a $300,000 profit. So NCI actually owns 20% of this $300,000 profit. The remainder is owned by the shareholders of the parent. So the parent portion is the 1.8 million that we talked about before, minus the 60,000 NCI share, or 1.74 million. So that was just to get you warmed up. 
Now we're going to look at the main type of example we're dealing with in this chapter, which is a case where the intercompany sale of inventory has happened in the year, but at the end of the year, that still remains either fully or partially in inventory. So it has not been sold to external parties. So in this example, we have a tax rate of 40%. We have another upstream sale. The sale amount is $5,000. The subsidiary paid $3,500 for this inventory. So we have a $1,500 intercompany profit. Now, at year end, 60% has been sold, therefore 40% is unsold. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the dollar value of unrealized profit in ending inventory. Now there are a couple of ways to do this and if you have a look at this slide you'll see that we can take the sale amount times the remainder in inventory then subtract the cost of goods sold times the remainder in inventory and we can get $600 unrealized profit. Now, the slightly quicker way to do this is just to just simply take the profit of $1,500 times the 40% remaining in inventory equals, again, $600. So what we need to do is eliminate this unrealized profit in any inventory. And we're going to do that by taking the 600 and eliminating that profit and also eliminating the tax that went with it. 40% tax in this question times $600 is 240. Take that away. If we did not do the elimination, we would have an overstatement of consolidated income by 360. And we also would have an inventory value overstated on the balance sheet by $600. So, just a reminder, the first elimination, whether this inventory has been sold to external parties or not, is to take away the full intercompany sale amount from both sales and cost of goods sold. In this way, you won't be double counting the sale. So this is a given for any intercompany sale, again, whether the inventory is remaining within the company at year end or not. Then we need to eliminate the unrealized profit. We had calculated this to be $600. Now, what happened here on an individual company basis is the subsidiary profited and it ended up paying tax on that profit at 40%. So the subsidiary on an individual statement basis again paid 240 tax. Now, as far as the consolidated entity is concerned, we paid that tax before we sold the merchandise to a third party. So therefore, we paid the tax in advance and it should not relate to this year, but instead to the year in which we sell to an external party. So we need to eliminate both the $600 profit and the related income tax. So here's how we do it. Remember that cost of goods sold is basically an expense account. We add the profit that is unrealized to cost of goods sold. Now this may seem strange at first, and it actually is kind of strange, because we're not just saying, oh, sales minus 600. Instead, we're increasing an expense account. That still reduces income by $600. We also reduce tax expense by 240. Now, in this PowerPoint presentation and video, we're just going to do this on the PowerPoint. However, when you're going through the textbook, please note that these are part of the calculations, and you're going to actually do this in calculations 3 and 5. 3 is the calculation of unrealized and realized profit and ending inventory, and then beginning and five is the calculation of consolidated net income. So you'll translate this information into the calculations. 
and you'll see that when you're studying the textbook example. So the effect of this is to increase cost of goods sold or an expense, therefore decrease income by 600. Reduce tax expense, which increases income by 240, and the net effect is that our income is reduced by 360, which is the after-tax profit. The balance sheet also needs to be adjusted. First, reduce ending inventory by $600. What this does is put your inventory value on the balance sheet back to where it would have been if that sale had not taken place. Second, recognize your deferred tax asset of 240. Remember that we reduced income tax expense basically because of the matching principle. We're going to book the profit when we sell this the next year. That's when we should recognize the tax. So for now, we're storing that in a deferred tax asset of 240. So in summary, sales and cost of goods sold are reduced by the full amount of the intercompany sale. Cost of goods sold is increased by the amount of unrealized profit. This reduces income. Income tax expense is reduced to 40, and that 240 is balanced with a new deferred tax asset of 240 on your balance sheet. The net effect on your income statement is to reduce consolidated net income by the after tax amount of this unrealized inventory sale of 360. On the balance sheet, we reduced inventory 600 and as I mentioned created a deferred tax asset for 240 and the net effect is to shrink the balance sheet by 360. Now in the next video we're going to take these same numbers and we're going to look at what we do the next year when this is actually sold to an external party.